Hello everyone, welcome to Conquer Learning and welcome to today's video. I am Lakshmi Kushwaha. So as we are doing the series on Indian Constitution, in earlier video we started the historical background of Indian Constitution. In this video also we are going to do another part uh, of historical background. Last video we studied how East India Company came into India for the purpose of the trade and ended up controlling or administrating the territories of India. Now today we are going to study the rule, crown rule, which started in 1858 and it ended in 1947 with the independence. So just a revision, in company rule, that is the East India Company rule, we studied that how over the period of the time East India Company, its control was completely taken away from by the British government since it was not able to administer the things properly. So it was in 1858 when the crown rule started, it was an end of East India Company and beginning of consultation with Indians. Now what is this consultation with the Indians? Let's understand this. In 1857, there was a first revolt that was done by the Indians against the Britishers, against the British rule. This first revolt of 1857 is also called as pure mutiny or the first world war of independence. Now, for this first revolt, there were a number of the causes like political cause, policies of doctrine has lapsed, social cause, sati system which was being practiced in India was abolished by Britishers, no cooperation from the educated class. Other than this, you must have all heard about the case of Mangal Pandey. So, the way Britishers were ruling India, the Indians were not happy with it. Right? So, it was in 1857 when they stood against the Britishers for the first time. And by this revolt of 1857, the Britishers realized that this is not going to work. If we want to rule, if we want to have the control of Indian territories, it's very, very important that we need to consult them, allow them to participate in the administration. Keeping this view in mind, the first Government of India Act 1858 came into the existence. This act was introduced in order to improve the administrative machinery within India and the act was called as the act of good government of India. So the objective or the purpose of this particular law or particular act was to involve Indians or to involve Indians into the administration of the country since they understood that the revolt 1857 if it wouldn't have been controlled it may have led to the dangerous picture. So here under this act it declared that India now would be governed by and in the name of Her Majesty Queen Victoria. So now here the crown rule came into existence. East India Company rule completely ended. So our Governor General of India, the position which was under the company rule was now called as Viceroy of India. The first Viceroy of India was Lord Canning. The Board of Control and the Court of Director which was an dwell or the double government introduced under the company rule. This point was where actually the dwell government or the Britishers came to control the administration of East India Company. So now since East India Company is completely removed, this board of control and court of directors were also removed or abolished. So it abolished or it ended the double government in the India. The new office called as SOS that is Secretary of State of India was formed and this office had in complete authority on control over Indian administration. The SOS was the member of British Parliament, sorry British cabinet and they were responsible to the British Parliament. So now you can say, see even if the act is called as the Government of India Act 1858, there was, there was not that much control given to the Indians. It was just a way to show the Indians that we want you to be part of it. But they played very smart. Uh, there was a crown rule. Everything have to be done according to the British. Though they are going to involve the India into it. But the control was to be with the Britishers only. So this SOS, a secretary of state of India, was to be assisted by 
15 members of council of india now 15 members of council of Midi india was completely an advisory body they are just going to advise no decision making whereas sos that is secretary of state was an body corporate now body of corporate means it was a body which can sue or sued can sue or sued in india as well as the england now that was the features of government of india act 1858 now the revolt of 1857 made the britishers or the british government realize that it is not going to be easy to administer or rule india without their consultation or their participation so to seek the cooperation from the indians in the administration of their own country they came up with the three series of act indian council act of 1861 1892 1909 let's see them one by one in detail so the indian council act of 1861 here is when the decentralization starts in the company rule if you remember or recall in the earlier video i explained you that in the company rule centralization was happening what was centralization governor general of bengal this uh, governor general of bengal was given complete authority of madras right so everything was given a controlled at one authority madras and uh, everything was under the one control now here this was in decentralization how so this process actually involved allowing the indians to participate in the administration how so this was the for the first time non official members who are this non official members they are indian representatives so the non official members were allowed to participate into the law making process as a legislative council so who were the indian representatives where from where the indian representations were taken raja the raja of banaras the maharaja of patiala and sri shri sir dinkar rao so they were the one who involved into the uh, were selected as an indian representation in the law making process over the period of the time there was an establishment of new legislative council for bengal north western provinces and punjab now since viceroy was having complete control they were empowered to make rules order for transaction of business in the council in india so it is business of council in india so complete power with the viceroy they can make rules and order for proper transaction proper working of the british business then recognition or to the portfolio system was done by lord canning now what is this portfolio system just like we have finance department we have it like segregation or separation basically into different portfolios into different departments or into the different sections so this portfolio system was uh, introduced by lord canning and it was given in recognition issues of ordinance without the concurrence of legislative council during the emergency though the indians were the part of the legislative council but during the emergency they were like not it was not necessary for in british parliament to concern them when it is coming to an emergency they can issue the ordinance who viceroy can issue the ordinance without their concern now that was your 1861 indian council act of 1861 uh, how you would be remembering this is since uh, there was an council of india introduced for the first night first time that's why that is called as indian council okay so indian council act of 1861 now moving to indian council act of 1892 again the number of there was an increase in number of non official members that is indian representatives in both central as well as pro provisional legislative council so both in both the places this council in india or this council Uh, indian councils were given in power to discuss the budget and address the questions to the executive there was an provision made for nomination of non officials by viceroy so whoever is the representation representing india that nomination would be made by viceroy this this nomination was to be made on recommendation of provisional legislative council bengal chamber of the commerce 
So these were the bodies which actually recommended that we want this Indian representatives or this non-official members. Then came Indian Council Act of 1909. Now this act is the act where actually it involved or uh, it allowed the Indians to be a part of executive council. Till now they were the part of or they were the one who were participating in the legislation. So it first thing it increased the size of legislative council both at central and provisional. This act is also called as Morley Minto reforms. Morley was as well secretary of state and viceroy was Minto. So first time this act introduced the association of Indians with the executive council of the viceroy and the governor. Mr. Satendra Prasad Sinha became the first person to join the viceroy executive council. He was selected or he was appointed as a law member. So formation of the law. So he was appointed as a law member. Then this reform is famous for introducing the communal representation. Now what is communal representation? Father of communal electorate is Lord Minto. What is this? This communal representation actually allowed the Muslims to accept their or select their leaders only through the Muslim votes. So anyone, any person belonging to the Muslim community or Muslim people, they want to select a leader from their own community, they can do that. And this way of selecting the leader or using the separate electorate is called as the communal representation. So anyways, this was again a part of divide and rule. They started dividing uh, on the basis of the separate electorate. So now Muslims were to be elected only by Muslim votes. Thus, it legalized communalism in India. Then came the Government India Act of 1919, which is Montagu Clemford Reforms, SOS Viceroy. So, SOS was Montagu and Clemford was the Viceroy. Here, this act actually, again, now as we are moving to the different acts, the decentralization process is increasing. So, this also played an important role in decentralizing by introduction of diarchy or double or dual rule. What was this? It relaxed the central control over the other provinces or the princely states and the central legislature and provisional legislature subject matter were divided. So, Viceroy, there were division, Viceroy central legislation, Viceroy was leading the central legislature and provisional legislature. So, this division was called as diarchy, double, dual or double rule. Now, this provisional legislature, there were two lists, transferred list and reserved list. This transferred list matters, subject matters in this list to be administered by the governor. However, reserve list to be administered by governor and his executive council, right? So, this system called as diarchy. So, you need to remember which year the diarchy was actually introduced by which act. So, it was in 1919. Also, this was the act through which a partially responsible government was introduced. So, now we are moving towards the government where Indians are given responsibility. So, it is a partially Im improvement. Also, this was a step towards the federation. Why federation? Because it provided the provisional autonomy and autonomy to the provision and princely states were also given some kind of, uh, you can say, power, right? So, this was Government of India Act 1919 now. Other than this, very, very important thing which was introduced by Act of 1919 is bicarmalism. Now, what is bicarmalism? Bicarmalism and direct election was introduced for the first time. Bicarmalism is introduction of upper house and lower house like we have Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. Upper house was called as the Council of State, lower house at Legislative Assembly and the members of this house is to be chosen by the direct election. Again, it introduced or it gave rise to communal representation for six Indian Christians, Anglo-Indians and Europeans. So, you can see 
uh, day by day over the acts, the communalism is increasing. Though the power was given, but it was limited. So, limited franchisee to the limited number of the people. New office called as High Commissioner of India was opened in London. Establishment of Public Service Commission, Central PSC 1926. This was under the Lee Commission. This was actually the recommendation of Lee Commission. So, you need to remember this is also important from uh, like there is a question being asked in the exam that what was the recommendation made by the Lee Commission. So, Public Service Commission uh, Act uh, 1926 was the Lee Commission's recommendation. Then came appointment of statutory body or statutory commission in order to inquire into repute of working after 10 years. Now, this act of 1919 decided that we will form a statutory commission. This commission would be responsible to inquire that how Indian, Indian administration is going on into the new, new way of working. But what happened? There was a non-cooperation movement done by Gandhiji because he was not happy of the federation, the way the federation was introduced. So, the failure of federation resulted into the non-cooperation movement by Gandhiji, which was a huge, huge uh, process and it affected the British. As a result, the Simon Commission, a statutory commission, Simon Commission under the Sir John Simon chairmanship was formed even before completion of 10 years that is in November 1927. The British government appointed seven member statutory commission chairmanship of Sir John Simon. This was to report how India is doing in its new constitution but to everyone's surprise there were no Indians, no Indian members were there. They submitted the report in 1930. And they recommended that diarchy system has to be removed. The extension of responsible, more responsible government should be given. Means the central legislation where Viceroy was having the control and provisional where only given the reserve matter or transferred list. This has to be removed and a more responsible government should be introduced. Keeping this recommendation in mind, a three round table conference was held. Having the representatives of British government, British India and Indian princely state. They together introduced a white paper on the constitution reform in order to introduce more responsible government. As result of this all effort, the Act of 1935 came. We will come to that. Before this, there was a communal award which happened in 1932. Now, Ramsey Macdonald, the British PM, announced a scheme of representation of minorities known as communal award. So, whoever are in minorities in India, they are allowed to represent their communities or minorities through separate electorate. And this was a communal award declared by Ramsey Macdonald. The separate electorate was for Muslims, Sikhs, Indian, Christian, Anglo-Indian, Europeans and it also extended to scheduled caste. But this communal award to the scheduled caste distressed Gandhiji. He was very unhappy. He was not at all happy with it. So, he took a fast until the death. So, Anshan pe gaye, marne, marne tak ke hum, uh, he was on fast in Yera Veda jail of Pune. As a result, because of the Gandhiji's distress, Pune Act was formed. This act was an agreement between the Congress and depressed class, reserved Hindu joint electorate and reserved seats to the depressed class. So, they reserved the separate Hindu joint electorate and reserved the seats for the depressed class as well. Then came your most important or landmark act that is Government Act. India Act of 1935, our Indian constitution is highly affected or maximum thing from this act is taken up in our Indian constitution. So, this was a milestone towards completely responsible government of India. It was, it was the largest consisting of 321 sections and 10 schedule. 
इट कंप्लीटली एंडेड दी डायर की सिस्टम प्रोविजनल ऑटोनॉमी एंड एस्टाब्लिश्ड ऑल इंडिया फेडरेशन सो एज एन इंडियन फेडरेशन कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ प्रोविंसेस एंड प्रिंसली स्टेट्स ऑफ यूनिट्स सो नाउ फेडरेशन इंडिया ऑल इंडिया फेडरेशन वेयर इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ प्रोविंसेस एंड प्रिंसली स्टेट इट ऑल्सो डिवाइडेड the power between the center and units in the terms of federal provisional concurrent list three list federal had 59 items provisional has 54 items and concurrent has 36 item you must be knowing that in our indian constitution we still have under the seventh schedule the federal government or the union list then we have state list and then we have the concurrent list it is still there so on the same line the three list was introduced this in 1935 for the first time it introduced the bicameralism means upper house and lower house in six out of 11 provinces bengal bombay madras bihar assam and other united provinces were made bicameral communal representation for scheduled caste and women labor worker diarchy was introduced now at center residue power were given to viceroy now what is what residue power the three list which we have created other than if any of the matter is not mentioned left over matters from this list it is called as residue residue matter so making the decision over this residue matter the residue power was given to viceroy there was an establishment of federal public service commission provisional public service commission joint service commission an establishment of federal court in 1937 right so 1935 act played a very very important role uh, in framing the base for the indian constitution then came india uh, independence act of 1947 this was actually the end of crown rule in india where pm clement atlee on feb 20 1947 declared that now british rule in india would end by june 30 1948 and he announced that the power would be transferred to indians completely but muslim league demanded the partition of country so there was a demand that we want in separate country so on june 3 1947 british government made clear that two separate constituent assembly can be created so british government made clear that consti constitution framed by constituent assembly of india formed in 1946 cannot apply to this part of the country which are unwilling to accept means since muslim league wanted to have a separate country separate uh, constituent assembly british cleared that those who want to be part of the country india they would be allowed they can but those who do not they are allowed to form their own assembly so on june 3 1947 Lord Mountain na Mount Betton Viceroy of India put forward the partition since in Muslim League wanted the separate so he was the one who put forward the partition plan for India which is also called as Mount Betton plan enacted Indian Independence Act of 1947 finally this act provided independent and sovereign state from 15th August 1947 for India partition of india happened it abolished the viceroy office a governor was appointed by the british king so viceroy system also ended it it empowered the constituent assemblies of two dominions so now what is this india and pakistan two different dominions so they were given a constituent assembly they can have their own so they can frame and adopt their own constitutions by themselves it abolished sos since everything now crown rule is ending british rule is ending everything is coming under the indian government so this also is keeping every position is keeping on ending it granted freedom to indian princely states either to join the dominion of india or pakistan or to remain independent this was the worst thing that they did uh, it they though they gave the independence to the india but they separated india they allowed the princely state whether they want to join india or pakistan it's their choice dropped a title of emperor of india from the royal titles of the king of england england and it discontinued the appointment of civil service and reservation post by sos in india 14th and 15th august was the separation when the separation happened 
Lord Mountbatten became the first Governor General of New India and Prime Minister was Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. So here we complete the historical background of Indian Constitution. We did company rule, the company rule where East India Company was ruling India and the crown rule where East India Company was completely abolished or ended and the British had a complete control. So this crown rule ended in 1947 with the independence. So I hope you like the video and if you have any doubts, you can always ask me in the comment section, share with others, subscribe to the channel for more such videos. In next class, we would be doing the salient features of the Indian constitution. So in the same manner, I would try to cover as many points as possible. Thank you. Give your feedback, give your comments after the uh, completing the videos in the comment section. Thank you.